go ahead and introduce our speaker presenter tonight. And we have Jamar Garcia and a wonderful anteater from 2003 and got his bachelor's at the Information and Computer Sciences. He is the principal consultant of Hatchwork Solutions, a professional services and consulting company that helps businesses reduce the stress on their operations using technology. He also serves as the vice president of the UCI ICS alumni chapter. So I am excited for you to be here. And is there other ways that you can reduce stress for us besides what you do in, in the professional life? Uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll let us know today. Well, we'll uh, we're gonna spend the first uh, 10 minutes uh, in pure silence and just, uh, <laughs> enjoy 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 the silence there you go <laughs> well without further ado i'm going to go ahead and let you um, take this away and all right jamar thank you sounds so good thank you so much wendy um so we've got um we've got a, at least with us live and thank you so much i know it's like it's like 7 p.m at least here on the west coast if you're on the east coast then thank you so much for joining us like 10 p.m is, is super you know super late um and uh, like so i've got I'm, i've got a young family we're, you know, we finished dinner and we're, you know, trying to, you know, get the kids down to bed. And um, so I, I totally understand how maybe this is uh, maybe the not, not the most um, uh, convenient time to join like a webinar, but hopefully I can add value and sort of create, uh, create some value for you and take something away that'll help you at least um, uh, with what we, you know, what we're calling career wellness, or at least, um, uh, uh, that's sort of the the topic that we're that we're talking about today. Um, show of hands, and maybe I think there's a uh, reactions. There might be like a if you use the the reactions panel to sort of raise your hand. How many of you feel like that you have like less time in general to get work done? Yeah, yeah, pretty. <laughs> Pretty, pretty common. I think, yeah, that's like that's the same here too. How many of you now, um, second question, how many of you feel like actual stress that your current job is going to change significantly or even go away within, within the next couple of years? Maybe not as much, which is, which is probably, probably good. And, and even, um, even if you do feel that way, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. I actually just saw an article posted on CNBC today that I actually shared on LinkedIn, that um, about um, that article about the top three jobs that are going away, or that you know the um, I think it was the the Bureau of Labor Statistics um, project that are going away within the next ten years. Sort of my comment on that was that you know upskilling, and we're going to talk a little bit about sort of how to in, in, improve. Some of your skill set, but uh, in my job, upskilling is an area of focus that um, uh, that we talk about. Unfortunately, we don't see a lot of traction. Um, one thing that I find is that we're in, we're so much in our like our routines and our grooves that we we don't find the time to really break out and try something new. So hopefully today um, we can take a little bit of time to kind of break out of those routines and 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 create some new neural pathways. Introducing myself, or at least uh, just to give you a little bit of background on me, uh, Wendy uh, introduced, thanks for introducing me there. Uh, graduated in 2003 uh, with, uh, uh, from the School of ICS. I've been in industry for about 21 years. Um, if you're doing the math, um, it doesn't quite work out. I actually was an intern, uh, I think the summer after my sophomore year for a software company here in Irvine. Uh, so I've been kind of uh, working in software, working in, in sort of process automation and um, uh, 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 capture for since I was like 18. So I've been I've been kind of uh, in the space for quite a while. Um, I've been self-employed for about eight years. Um, so after working for the software company um, for about 12 years, I, I went off and worked for a startup. Uh, kind of the thing that every young uh, technologist does and, and with the hopes of, of being a, an internet billionaire. 
and I lasted for about nine months. <laughs> so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't quite in the cards for me as far as uh, uh, doing the whole startup thing, but um, I've started my own company and do consulting for companies to help them with their business processes, um, making sure that they can uh, automate uh, sort of processes that are you know, paper-based and slow, and then try to help um, uh, uh, take people who are doing those, man, you know, doing those manual tasks and put them into higher value tasks. Um, I do also uh, volunteer quite a bit, um, as uh, as Wendy noted. Um, I'm uh, part of the um, uh, the alumni chapter board for ICS, and so after this, if you're interested in in um, uh, uh, learning more about the chapter, uh, I have my email at the end slide, and feel free to to send me a note. Uh, by the way, um, feel free um, since it's. Uh, uh, a, a pretty intimate group. Feel free to jump in and come off mute if you have any questions, um, want to make a comment kind of as we go along. Uh, I have no problems with that. So um, just, you know, feel free to uh, do that or type in chat if you have any questions. Um, Wendy, you can go ahead and stop me or interrupt me if you have anything that, that I should probably answer um, in context. So, um, when um, I, I went to meditate on, on the, 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 the topic of career wellness, um, the first thing that I thought about was, okay, so, you know, wellness uh, and, and how do I um, kind of define wellness in a sort of holistic sense? Um, I really wanted to focus on just like productivity and kind of, you know, well, you can use technology to be productive at work. But I really thought that was kind of shortchanging the conversation. And I really thought about not necessarily focusing on like output from a pro productivity perspective, but really thinking about meaning that I'm, that I'm actually working on something that's meaningful, uh, not necessarily my day-to-day -day just job as it's defined, but bigger picture, where do I want to go in my career? And so hopefully we'll be able to touch on those things. Um, so I kind of split up the, the topic into two different, uh, two different tracks. The day-to-day, -day, you know, we will talk about like how to um, uh, be more productive and also just kind of the, the normal, um, you know, let's say blocking and tackling, if you will, uh, for working with technology, uh, but also how to take a step back and put ourselves into a position to, to really grow uh, our careers um, in sort of this now, not really now technologically fueled economy, but it's been like that for quite a while. But now it just feels like we're really kind of like on, on like supercharge <laughs> technology um, as it is now in, in business. Um, I kind of feel like when I think about the promise, the promise of technology and the promise of, of, of the, let's, let's, let's kind of touch on the, the personal computer. So Steve Jobs, um, I believe it was Steve Jobs that, that noted that um, when he thought about the personal computer, he thought of it as a bicycle for the mind. And so not necessarily just from a pure productivity perspective, but just from a human creativity and human achievement perspective. And so um, I feel like that we've done a good job in the consumer space, sort of in that same vein. But it's interesting because in in the corporate world and in business, we're we're really far from that from that ideal. And so, one topic that we that we talk a lot about in in sort of at least in the, like the enterprise and like enterprise enterprise business IT is the consumerization of IT. Basically, the with the advent of the mobile phone and how accessible apps are and how use how uh, usable apps are and internet applications are, it kind of creates a friction with um, the business world because now we're like so powerful as individuals, but when we work in, in our day-to-day -day jobs, we're powerless and we're frustrated and we can't get our day-to-day -day jobs done and, and just working with these systems are so difficult. And so that sort of friction is something that um, at least uh, companies that I work with try to resolve and have been trying to resolve for a number of years now, but I mean, clearly there's a lot of work to be done. Um, a couple 
points there around sort of the reality, at least in business. I mean, with the with so much data, we have so many devices, um, so much content. You think that we're we're dealing with a lot of we have a lot of good information, but really we have to filter through a lot of noise. Um, we have always on technology, which is great when you like when you first think of it, and then you really think, man, um, is this phone really just sort of ruling my life? Is it is having a a, a, a tether to my to my job uh, really just you know uh, impeding, uh, or is it is it um, encroaching on my on my you know on my personal time? Um, and with all that data, how are we able to deal with so much data and having that sort of data overload? So that's sort of like when you compare the, the promise versus the reality. Um, when we have, we, we've seen that um, technology has is, is disrupted a lot of business. Uh, when you look at um, like the Amazons of the world and, and the, the Googles of the world, uh, creating better customer experiences uh, in, you know, in, in search, in, in e-commerce. It's, it's uh, upended a lot of business, but there is a lot of opportunity in that um, as well. And so while there's a lot of stress maybe in trying to deal with this, I like to look at things um, on the more positive sense and try to find ways that I, at least I can um, grow in this new sort of regime. And so when I think about things that change very frequently, I like to focus on things that don't change. And so things that don't change, in my opinion, at least in business, one is the desire to make better decisions. I feel like regardless of the technological change or how you know fast things change, you know, how fast things change, we're always going to want to make better decisions. We're always going to want to deliver better, uh, better and better experiences to our customers uh, and our employees, uh, and also just a general desire to do business better. So let's talk about um, the specifics here, um, breaking things up between sort of tips and tricks on like the day to day, how to uh, uh, keep yourself um, more digitally secure. Um, productive and to talk about how to um, maybe disconnect and, and, and be sort of a, and, and use technology as, as, a, as a good tool, uh, but also from a career growth perspective, how do we now take a step back and um, uh, uh, put ourselves into a better position for, for growth? All right, so let's get into the day-to-day. -day. So, um, I put this in sort of the, the category of what I call sort of standard blocking and tackling for lack of a better term, using a, using a football term. And so this is kind of like your standard digital hygiene. Um, you know, we could be fancy and sort of automate all the things, but um, if we don't pay attention to our digital hygiene, you know, we put ourselves at risk. And so it's one of those things where if we end up like, you know, um, uh, getting hacked or we end up, you know, uh, having our, having our accounts, um, compromised, that's just going to add more stress to our lives. So we might as well be really diligent about, about our digital security, because that's just the world we live in. So, um, just some, some tips there. Um, if you're not using a password manager, um, and not using sort of main, you know, strong passwords across all your various services, you definitely want to do that. I personally use uh, LastPass. Um, that it, it, it's a tool that um, I could use sort of on my browser, I could use on my phone, and it actually kind of keeps track of all my passwords pretty easily. And it's fairly seamless when it actually comes down to using it um, on, my, on, you know, on your various sites. Um, if, you've, uh, if you're not familiar with multi-factor authentication, um, you definitely want to get familiar with that. Basically what that is, is it is, um, a way for uh, systems to authenticate you in more ways than just your password. So for example, um, uh, sort of the first, uh, first way that um, multi-factor authentication was implemented was using like basically text messages to send you sort of a code once you log in. 
now it's a little bit more, um, uh, they've got more options there so that you can use like um, an app on your phone to basically enter in like a secondary value for when you log in. Uh, beware of phishing attempts. So this email that I'm showing a screenshot, actually I received um, a couple of days ago and it was actually a really good phishing attempt. So um, if you're not familiar with phishing, basically what it is, is it's it, typically it's emails that you get that pretend like something's wrong with your account or something, and they try to get you to click a link. And so what's crazy is that this is, so Namecheap is um, the domain registrar that I use for, uh, for Hatchwork Solutions from business. And it was, you know, like they have the logo and it says Namecheap support. If you see the, 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 um, the sender, and it sounds pretty important. I'm like, oh man, I don't want my hosting plan to get canceled. I should update, update my payment details now. And everything about it, unless you really slow down and think, okay, so if you look at the email address that it's actually from, it's not from Namecheap. It's from Anna, uh, AnnArborSoccer.com. So you know that that's not right um if you look at some of the you know the words or the sentences on the on the email it's it's not um like the second like to avoid canceling the the um the two the two is not capitalized and it's like on a different line there so a lot surprisingly a lot of phishing attempts have really bad grammar and <laughs> they have a lot of bad um um punctuation and things like that. So um, that should be a clue. That should be a really big clue so that you should, when you look at something like this, try to slow down and not just click the link, right? Because that, that was my sort of initial response. Okay, update now, I wanna, that's what I'm gonna do. And so it really, it really uh, behooves you to kind of slow down and, and kind of um, really take it in. And don't, uh, if there's, if you have any doubt, don't click on the email itself, but go to your account on the website directly and then see if you can find the same information. So that's just kind of a big tip there. Um, last item, use VPN when using public Wi-Fi. Um, so if you are at Starbucks or, I mean, uh, or at the airport, um, you want to be very careful about accessing sensitive, sensitive websites where you're putting in your your um, you know your passwords because um, you know if those uh, those Wi-Fi hotspots are are compromised, then there's there's a chance that you can some you know you can send your password um, in clear text to someone who's um, sniffing the network. So. Contact me if you have any questions around like specific, um, you know, services. If 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 you can't you can't find one on the open market, but that's I whenever I go on public Wi-Fi or even at like uh, to a hotel, I'm I'm usually one not accessing anything <laughs> sensitive, or two I'll, I'll be on my VPN if if needed. Any any questions about any of that? I know it's pretty technical. Hi, um, what was the name of the password manager that you mentioned? I use LastPass, L-A-S-T-P-A-S-S. -S. Thank you. And that's something that you just um, download or upload on yeah, your so, PC? Yeah, so um, it's, uh, there's a, um, um, uh, it, it's like, It'll download like a um, like a browser plugin, but you can also download an app that will. It'll keep it'll keep track of your different accounts um, in its in its cloud. It encrypts it, um, and only you have the key. So you should be able to um, like only you'll be able to open it. Um, that that kind of brings me to a little bit of um, maybe I won't touch on it, but, but there's there there's sort of a class of applications that are called like no. Uh, no trust or zero trust um, applications that basically you own like the encryption keys. 
or you keep the encryption keys. So even the company that is hosting whatever service, they won't even know how to decrypt your, your information. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it'll be able to follow you to your different devices. So it's super convenient, but only you should be able to access, um, access the, uh, the passwords. Thank you. And can I ask one more follow-up question? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make my daughter dinner, so I'm like. No worries. Full of no stuff. Worries. Um, I I get emails all the time from Google or whoever it is on my computer that keeps warning me that I should, you know, if I have the same password for multiple accounts. Is there? Can you talk a little bit about having using the same password for mm -hmm. multiple things? Yeah. <laughs> Good, yeah. Bad. No, for sure. Yeah. And so um, the the risk there. So let's say. Um, uh, let's say I use the same password for Facebook and my bank, which would probably not be a good idea. Um, if I use the same email address and somehow my password gets um, compromised, meaning someone knows my password in clear text, what happens, and this is kind of a, a, a kind of a gross thing to think about, but there are sort of underbellies of the internet that will have people's email addresses and their passwords, like from compromised sources. And so if you have the same password across different services, um, bad actors, hackers can go and say, okay, well, let me try this account, right? Like uh, this account and password, it's easy for them to do it in bulk because they can just write a script that kind of does it. So it's good to have different passwords for different accounts. So in case, you even get your password compromised on one service, they won't be able to use that same information to compromise you on another service. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll, I'll assume that and, makes and, sense. And Jamar, this is Vijay, and just hey, to add on to that. Hey, yeah. how are you doing? Um, just to add on to that, um, you know, what I've read recently is have longer passwords, um, mm -hmm. make, making phrases for each, application you're using um, that way you at least remember it and uh, the longer the password the harder it is to to, to crack um, and mm -hmm. you know I, 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 as we increase our tech, technology power our technological infrastructure it's easier to start um, breaking or hacking into shorter and more complex passwords which is kind of ironically different than where the trend is going towards longer passwords where they don't change as often so, um, and then the second thing that I, I, I've, I've been looking at the suite, so that's why I bring it up. And the, the second really neat thing is um, here in the near future, we're going to come up with passwordless accounts where, like you mentioned, uh, biometrics along with token authentication will allow you to log into a certain um, site as we go forward. So that technology is coming down the pipe pretty soon. What, what's interesting is that um, apparently your voice is like using your voice as an authentication method is actually pretty secure and and fairly straightforward to do and so i know i've been working with um some um some companies where the, in, in addition to setting up a password you set up a, a voice password and so you basically just repeat a phrase it it captures your voice and you're able to you know authenticate by just speaking so that's that's another area there Hey, um, Jamar, we yeah. have uh, another question for you, but in tagline to that. So we'll just say, hey, Siri, open up my Google Doc or whatever that you, it'll recognize my voice and or Alexa. That's kind of <laughs> wait. So I'm, well, I guess um, I mean, um, I, I mean, you, you'll have that today. Um, mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll recognize it today. But yeah, as far okay. as um, um, being able to know that it's you or at least yeah. you can authenticate yourself. That's, I think that's something that's probably coming, um, right. hopefully a little bit more broadly. Well, we have a Kevin Ung and he asked, what is wrong with opening the phishing email without clicking the content? Great question. Cause sometimes I think, yeah. oh my gosh, I opened it up and, but I didn't click in your case, the update mm -hmm. now, have I compromised myself? So opening, opening it for the most part won't. Uh, won't do anything. I think that most 
like most email clients will not run anything um, automatically. It, even, even a lot of clients will, um, won't load images because a lot of times images are uh, mm -hmm. used to DNA, de anonymize, not really de anonymize, but basically tell whoever sent the email, like where you're located, like, because it's gonna load your IP. And so um, for the most part, just opening the email should be fine. Usually what happens is when you click update now, it maybe it might not like necessarily like download something, but it will take you down a path that as the further you get down the path, the more likely you are to have something bad happen. Like, hey, can you um, give us your credit card information because well, we need to update your account, something, mm -hmm. something like that, right? Mm -hmm. But good question. So uh, I have a question too, a VPN, how do you acquire? So I'm familiar with the VPN that the university gives me that mm -hmm. for me to get on to their portal. Um, but how do I get one for when I'm using my phone at Starbucks? Yeah. There's a... So there, there are, uh, yeah, there's, so there are a bunch of services out there um, that um, you, you download an app and then um, it will basically create a VPN for, for your phone or for your computer. Um, and it, instead of connecting to your work, instead of connecting to your work um, uh, network, it just basically, it creates a secure tunnel to their servers, right? To the, the vendor's servers. And so um, it will um, uh, encrypt all traffic mm -hmm. to and from. So that, that should create sort of that protected tunnel. So to speak. Cool. Yeah, and Wendy, the one I use is called BetterNet VPN. So when I'm at Starbucks or hotel called BetterNet, that okay. one's pretty good. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Jamar, that's it for the questions. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had to turn on the fan. It's hot for a first day of fall. Right. All right. Um, so let's get into personal workflows. Um, so. Um, using technology as a tool, um, again, back to the promise, I think that, I think less is more. Um, I actually use, one of the things that has helped my day-to-day, -day, um, probably the most is scheduling meetings. And it's like, okay, so when can you meet? Especially if someone, this is a, you know, uh, a colleague or a client, a client or a prospect that, you know, you don't share you don't actually share a calendar with, um, uh, you know, you're always kind of going back and forth and you're like, okay, well, how's next week? Uh, and then how's tomorrow? What days are you available? So this service Calendly, um, and I'm not, I don't make any money from, the, from, from this actually, I'm just super excited by using it. Um, it. It synchronizes with my calendar and basically gives people the opportunity to schedule time. So 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 90 minutes, 120, you could kind of customize all of it. And so what happens is it synchronizes with my calendar. So people can just say, I can just say, hey, if you want to schedule a meeting with me, follow this link. And then they go and choose the time that's available for them. It cuts out the whole negotiating of time. And so I think for that, that one, that one tool has cut down so much of my, like just so much email traffic and actually, it, it really reduces um, a lot of friction for people who want to communicate with me. And, and you know, if, I'm, if you're a small business owner or you, know, um, you work with a lot of folks that are sort of outside of your, your corporate network, um, I think this is a great tool because it, it makes it super convenient for people to find time in your calendar uh, to be able to, to meet with you. Um, there are some other tools um, around just kind of personal workflows in general. Um, uh, Zapier and uh, if that's the, if I F T T T if this then that is sort of a, that's an oldie but goodie. Um, but basically, you're able to stitch different services together. Um, if like let's say you um, want to uh, 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 take from one calendar and update another calendar then you're able to kind of do that. So if you're finding that you are kind of in between systems and trying to kind of 
make them work together and you're the one in the middle, you might want to look at some of these tools to kind of help bridge the gap. Um, something that's kind of been popularized in sort of the business space that is, it's interesting because they, it, they, uh, a lot of businesses position it as tools for sort of individuals to use um, or like software robots. So um, if you've heard the term robotic process automation, it's, uh, it's, it's a tool that lets you automate things on your desktop. And so let's say you work a lot in Excel and you want to be able to manipulate and you're not, you know, um, let's say you're um, moving data between different Excel files and, and you're not using like formulas. You're actually able to use different tools uh, or like you're able to train a robot to do different steps that you would normally do um, on your computer. And so um, it does take a little bit of training. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but um, this is sort of a low code way to be able to do automation so that if you do have some tasks in your day-to-day -day job that are just repetitive, this lets you kind of, this lets you automate those things. Um, and so, uh, UiPath I know is like, um, uh, you can probably go on their website and, and sign up for free even, and use some of the robots up to a certain capacity. Uh, for free, so it might be worth looking into if if that's um, uh, if that sort of fits your fits your model. Um, there are some other low code application platforms um, like um, Power Apps for Microsoft, AppSheet I think for Google, and Honeycode is a new one for um, for um, Amazon and uh, for Amazon AWS. And what's interesting is that like, and this is where there's a little bit of bleed over from like, like corporate sort of business IT and really trying to create tools for individuals in their sort of like day-to-day -day jobs as knowledge workers. These probably wouldn't be bad tools to learn um, if you um, uh, uh, are in a job that um, uses, let's say like Microsoft and you might want to learn like Power Apps and you can go on their website and kind of learn it for free um, because where, we're, where I'm starting to see a lot of trending is for people that understand business to be able to create apps and be able to create sort of business tools as opposed to developers creating business tools. So as far as like a long-term opportunity as well to, to sort of understand how to maybe use your current experience to, um, um, to position yourself in the future, looking at some low-code uh, platforms uh, might be um, might be useful. Any questions with that? I think we're good. Okay. Um, the last bullet on sort of day to day is sort of <laughs> how do I now not use technology? I think it's one of those things that like um, I, I personally am on the screen like uh, probably. 14 hours a day. It's, it's actually quite bad. Whenever I can, I like to disconnect. Um, it gives me an opportunity to, to recharge, uh, be more creative. And even when, um, um, you know, I'm going out for a walk, I find time. Sometimes I like, okay, well, how do I, do I listen to an audiobook now? Or do I go listen to a podcast? And really, I find that recharging and being completely disconnected. I mean, there's so much it's so luxurious in a way, and it's kind of sad to say it, but it is kind of a luxury to be able to disconnect from all the technology that we have. And so just some tips, um, uh, what's worked for me. Um, I meditate, I like to, to actually, ironically, I use an app to meditate. It's, I, it's kind of like the funniest thing, but I use, I use Headspace to meditate. Um, I turn off notifications whenever I can. Um, I actually, I've tried this and it works. I, I've, it's funny because, um, I, I kind of tricked my, I tricked my daughter with this before. I, I turned my screen grayscale. If you don't know how to do it, it's um, look it up online and you can find um, instructions on how to do it. Basically what we're doing when we, when we make our screen grayscales, we make it less attractive. It actually like will, will um, um, uh, <laughs> produce less, uh, 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 what is it? Um, 
not endorphins, what is it, um, dopamine, when you, when you look at your phone. And so it actually becomes less addicting. You're able to kind of like, oh, well, maybe I won't scroll Instagram for 30 minutes straight um, because the pictures are black and white. So might be, uh, might be worth um, kind of using that if you're trying to sort of um, wean yourself off of, off of your phone. Um, single tasking, um, I love, I, sometimes I, I just love doing, doing the laundry and folding clothes. Don't even put the TV on and just fold clothes and just really focus on, really focus on that task and just sort of say single, single threaded. Um, reading a physical, physical book or uh, my favorite, as you can see, I'm, I'm here running, running without music. I actually uh, ran, I've run one marathon in my, in my life and it was the, the Napa marathon. And it was, a, it was a no headphone course. And I thought I was going to die, right? Like, how am I going to run a full marathon with no music? But it was one of those things that like, I had to train for it and actually really appreciated not having anything to listen to except for sort of nature and cars honking uh, <laughs> while, while on a run. So those are the day-to-day -day ways to sort of um, get uh, get the most out of technology or even disconnect from technology. Let's talk a little bit about career growth. I think um, when we look at trend lines as far as careers that are growing, um, probably one of the more accessible uh, careers um, is around data science and statistics. Um, if you can try to become as data oriented as possible um, when it comes to decision making and artificial intelligence, machine learning, things that fuel those algorithms, it's all about data. And so if you can become oriented and understand how to measure, uh, how to know what's important in your business, in your industry, and um, uh, become uh, uh, proficient in, in statistics and data science, there's actually, um, uh, a lot of courses that are fairly, or maybe even free, uh, free and, and sort of uh, fairly inexpensive courses to, to learn about data science. And if you can get into the coding piece, um, learn with like Python, then you really, you're really putting yourself into a good position for sort of like next, next gen or even like current gen jobs. Um, but demand for, for, uh, Statisticians and data science uh, data scientists are going to increase, uh, at least according to the Euro, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, and let's see, was there any? Other? I think that was that's what I wanted to cover there on that topic. Um, in my opinion, also um, focusing on the customer experience. I think that while this has been something that's been important for quite a while and kind of has always been important in business, it's even more important in, in, in sort of the technological, in this technological age, because we're kind of redefining a lot of communication between businesses and individuals. And so if you can help, if you can understand how to help your customers make progress, I think you're in general, especially if you're like a small business owner or if you're in marketing or um, customer service, uh, product management, um, understanding um, uh, how customers consume and how um, the, the decision-making process for someone to actually go and buy something, I think is super valuable. Uh, a book that I would recommend is by Bob Nesta, uh, Demand, Side, Demand Side Sales 101. He kind of turns sales on its head a little bit and so instead of sales and marketing instead of talking about sort of demographics and looking at sort of it's interesting because it's kind of like i just contradicted a little bit on the data side but looking instead of looking at demographics he looks at sort of the story of a customer's struggle and understanding the customer's struggle and how products come into um, unlocking and unlocking that struggle or at least helping the customer make progress. And he uses, I, I'm being really deliberate about the, the, the term make progress. Um, then you really understand how to, you understand the causality of sales. And so um, when, we, when we talk about customer experience and sales and business in general, 
understanding that is going to be invaluable. And actually it's something that doesn't, it, the, the, the actual tactics might change as we change in business, but the idea of understanding customers won't change. And so that's, that's an area um, that you'll want to focus on. And even if you're not in sales, it's, I've read enough sales books that's, you know, like if everyone's in sales, we're all trying to sell something to someone. If we're talking to someone, trying to convince someone of something, we're trying to sell them something. Uh, we're trying to sell them on our idea. If you're a volunteer and you're trying to recruit uh, for the alumni board, BJ, um, then, then, you know, you're, you're selling something, you're selling, um, you're selling the organization. So um, I think it's sales is an area that uh, we should all um, spend some time uh, getting to know. Um, and lastly, um, find your role. So um, real quick, can, can anyone, does anyone know what this is? It looks like a scanner, right? But it looks like kind of a weird wonky scanner. It's actually a cake. So this is this is this is one of my my one of my favorite photos. This actually was was um, this cake was baked by an old colleague of mine uh, who worked in tech support, um, and it was probably one of the best scanner cakes I've ever seen. Probably the only scanner cakes I've ever, I've ever seen. But really, kind of the the point I wanted to make with the picture was that I mean we all come in different shapes and sizes, and we. Um, our, our opportunity is to really find how we fit in sort of this, I don't know if we want to call it, I would, I'd call it a new economy, but this changing economy. Um, that's kind of a lot of why I talk about like the productivity on the, like the first half, because I feel like the productivity, not so much like, I, you know, we need to like con continually produce but we're able to now take time for ourselves to really understand what we wanna do with our careers. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, and so in my opinion, to work in sort of this sort of technolo technology fueled economy, we don't all have to be developers, right? Um, I happen to be a software developer, but um, I find that there are a lot of people that understand business, understand people, and understand how to create a customer, understand how different pieces of a business interact that can find themselves uh, uh, roles in uh, uh, sort of new business models. And so, um, or come on with points there. Um, so that whole, the whole topic on business analysts is actually super interesting because, uh, and Vijay and I were kind of talking about this sort of previously, um, finding someone who understands business, but also understands how to communicate something to developers is actually one of the rarest things in business, surprisingly. Um, we, you know, always try to think about, do we find someone who's technical and teach them how, teach them about business? Or do we find someone who knows about business uh, and teach them how to be technical? And so the closer you get to bridging that gap as a person, the more valuable or the more marketable um, you will be. So um, I wouldn't just completely say, you know, I'm business or I'm technical. I would try to find sort of, sort of blend yourself into those opportunities uh, and use your, use, your, use your experience, use your talent set, use your skill set to basically create opportunities for yourself. And I, I've, I've I, I really believe that um, there's so much opportunity to find different niches in, um, in sort of this changing economy. Um, so different, some non-technical roles I note there. So product management, um, product marketing, business analysts, like I talked about technical writing, and then someone who understands the business process itself. A lot of times businesses don't really document the steps that are needed in order to produce an output. And so if you understand the business and you understand how to optimize those processes, you're going to be super you know, valuable to the business and super marketable to the business. So um, um, find those opportunities.
Um, we're almost to the end here, um, sort of in closing, just one big sort of macro picture. Um, I, I truly, truly believe this. If you, if you work hard to deliver value to others, then regardless of what you do, um, you're gonna build a successful career. And I think that uh, a successful and rewarding career. And, and that's how, um, and that's a big reason why at least I volunteer for, uh, uh, for the ICS alumni board, because I feel like that um, I've, I've been fortunate to, to be able to um, do well in the in industry, understand the business side, understand the technical side, and to be able to um, uh, create value for others. So I, I feel fortunate and feel, at least I feel the need to give back. Um, and that's it. Um, my email's right there. Feel free to contact me. Um, if you have any questions, um, gave, we have about 10 minutes left. So um, we can, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about or even anything I haven't talked about, uh, feel free to, uh, to ask away. Yeah, thank you, Jamar. And yeah, please unmute yourself if you have some of the pressing questions that you didn't get a chance to ask during our time here. Um, let us know. Um, super helpful, Jamar. I think, you know, one thing too that I also find it is um, just it, so many different platforms and people are now going um, to Google Docs and mm -hmm. using Google Docs all the time and then trying to figure out, okay, that person shared, sent me that um, link to that Google Doc, but now I have to go back into that email to go find it, you know, and just having to set up a whole infrastructure um, to be able to find those. Um, it's, it's, it seems like we're constantly bombarded. And so I love, love the fact that, and didn't Google, aren't they even offering some free classes that you can take at Google that will help you help your career? And I'm not, I'm actually, I, I, I've not heard that, but I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm definitely not surprised. Um, but yeah, I think that one thing that I'm finding is that at least the, the, the large software companies are um, trying to create as many resources as they can for individual users. And so, yeah, I mean, things are out there. I, my, I guess my piece of advice is that, I mean, less is more, I always feel like. And, and um, the more, I guess, you can remove, probably the better. Um, so if you can eliminate things, eliminate complexities, it's almost better than, you know, than trying to add something to make things better or make things automated or faster. So I think that when we look at technology, the, the biggest, the biggest and most meaningful technologies are technologies that are invisible, in my opinion. And so if we can get to that point where we're actually removing things, then rather than adding things, then I think we'll be in better shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't, don't make it too complicated. Keep it, keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. There you go. The, um, and then on that same topic, um, I go just daily, but I, I love to learn. And so I think podcasts are also a good avenue to, um, just understand what other people are going through or if there's um, new technologies out there that help you with your career. I think that's always something that someone should aspire to, to listen to on an ongoing basis and just keeps you up with the trends. So um, I know, I know, Jamar, I know I actually love music when I run. So I actually, I listened to podcasts recently and just catch up on some of the new yeah. trends and see how that, you know, works with my career and, um, and share my knowledge with others. It's, it's, it's helpful. Very cool. Very cool. We should also note that um, the first Friday of every month, ICS does a lunch and learn for their ICS alumni. But I found that some of your topics aren't specifically um, geared towards um, ICS alumni that um, it, the general layperson can really benefit from that. So um, if you all are interested in that, that's it's right. The first three, the first Friday of every month, right? Yeah, that's coming up. I think we'll, we're probably going to start promoting our next one here soon at least hopefully we'll get that out here but yeah that's right uh we're, we're coming back from sort of a summer uh mm -hmm. summer break but yeah i think we'll be um back on there soon all right any other um, questions? oh good 
I just first I, I wanted to say thank you so so much. Sorry, yelling from the other room, but um, I just had one question. You had talked about calendars a little bit, and um, I wanted to know if there's like if I wanted to create like a family calendar, but not include all of my work stuff. Um, I use Outlook for work, and I guess we all use Google. Um, kids, you know. Yeah. Is, is there one you recommend so I don't mix too much? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great question. So I think Calendly actually does support multiple calendars. So you you should be able to link. Um, now you might need to, depending on depending on your, your company, they might need to approve um, the synchronization of, of your calendar. So there might be some, uh, some friction there. So hopefully if you can get that going, then um, you should be able to like do, you know, put your family calendar that's on Google, add that, you know, um, add your work calendar so that, yeah, if anyone tries to book, it'll kind of find the open spot. We got a good question. Thanks. No problem. Yeah, I use, I use Apple, uh, the Apple calendars for, for my family calendar. And uh, so far, it works fairly well. Um, but yeah, I like to I like to block block lots of lots of time in my calendar so no one can book meetings with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Anyone else? Well, along with um, ICS doing their lunch and learn. We do an Anteater Wellness Wednesday every month, and it's the fourth, usually, except for during the holidays. Um, we have um, uh, Anteater Wellness Wednesday, the fourth um, Wednesday of every month. And uh, next month, uh, and what's great about being associated with UCI is we also have amazing talent like Jamar today, um, but then we also can tap into some of the uh, research areas of the university. So UCI Mind, uh, which does a lot of research on brain, especially about Alzheimer's, they're going to be um, uh, presenting in conjunction with our ICE, or excuse me, our Korean American alumni chapter next month and talk about the latest advancements and treatments um, on Alzheimer's. And as, as we've all heard, um, it, the statistics aren't great on um, what's happening with Alzheimer's in, in across the globe and especially here in the United States. So we all want to learn um, what we can do to, to help that. And I think they're going to be making a call for people to actually join in some of the research um, studies, especially um, they're needing Asian Americans, um, an underrepresented uh, group that needs more research. So it's going to be fascinating. So I'd love for you all to attend that. And that is on October 27th at 7 p.m. And um, also we will be sending you an email after this event. And we'd love to have you fill out a survey if you have any ideas how to improve our presentation or have other um, topics. In fact, I see Brenda Ward here. She uh, was, she did a great topic on orchids and how to nurture orchids and have successful orchids. So Anteater Wellness Wednesday Wellness is the, the whole broad um, aspect of how to bring joy and wellness in, into your life. So Brenda, it's good to see you here and thank you for being here. And so fill out the survey if you have any other ideas. And then also, we'll also have a listing of all of our, we just have 40 chapters that uh, across the globe. And uh, click one of the boxes there if you're interested in learning more about one of their chapters and our leaders would love to, to reach out to you and let you know what's going on and how you can become more engaged at here at UCI. So thank you so much. And any other questions? I think that's it. So I'm going to close out our September and your wellness of 2021. So thank you all for being here and let's all together, let's do a Zot. And for those of you who don't remember, oh, I'm having problems with my virtual screen. I'm going to do it here this way. So remember, with your anteater, you can't do this, which is kind of like, you know, the, the University of Texas Longhorns, right? You got to pull the snout back, pull your thumb all the way back behind, and that makes you um, an anteater with the snout there. So on the count of three, we're all going to do a three Zots, okay? One, two, three. 
Zod. Zod, Zod, Zod. 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 Woo! You got it, Jamar. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> All right. Have a great night. Thanks, everyone. Good night.